In the Pits is partnered with 71 Designs, owned and operated by veteran Wade Martin, and partnered with fellow Texas brand Compete. 71 Designs can take your ideas for soft goods, merchandise, and casual wear and make them a reality. Message 71 Designs on Facebook or Instagram to get started today. In the Pits is partnered with Pod Runners Union. Pod Runners Union breaking news. Super limited Union Tech Tees and, for the first time, Fiesta Medals are available online at podrunnersunion.org. Use offer code PITS for 10% off of your order. Stealing pods for undeserving teams. It's a living. In the Pits is partnered with Mariachi Aguilas de Oro. Based in Austin and servicing the surrounding areas, these Golden Eagles will bring life to any event you are having, from birthdays, anniversaries, holidays, corporate events, or even a simple performance to enjoy. Guillermo Padilla, one of their trumpet players, is also a member of the Texas paintball scene. Visit them on Facebook and Instagram to check out some of their past performances, or give them a call to book them for your event today. In the Pits is partnered with Skull Monkeys Paintball. Equip, engage, excel. In the Pits is partnered with XTPL Events. The Extreme Tournament Paintball League is a series put on by the Lukau family of paintball fit fame that gives the opportunity for players to learn and grow together as a team. Three-man, Challengers and Champions X-Ball, Draft Mech X-Ball, and even u 3 v 3 There's something for everyone at XTPL. Not to mention prize tosses, raffles, and the infamous paintball munching contest. Events happen throughout the year, and the prizes never disappoint. Sign up for an XTPL event today on PB Leagues. In the Pits is partnered with Hydra. Designed by players, for players, you can outfit yourself in Hydra gear from head to toe. Have confidence that when you make a purchase from Hydra, you are purchasing a well-tested and well-thought-out product, trusted by several top teams, including first-place semi-pro team, paintballfit.com. I personally recommend their Hydra Black knee pads. Purchases over $100 receive free shipping. Head to hydra.fit to browse their selection and discover the Hydra mentality. In the Pits is partnered with Bem Wraps. Behind every mask is a unique and creative player. Tap into it when you order your next custom headpiece. Their Build a Band lets you communicate with them one-on-one to make your order just the way you want, all the way down to the color of the stitch. Check out their Instagram, at BEMRAPS, for drops and build videos of them working on orders. They offer very competitive pricing, so reach out today to get started on your own one-of-a-kind headpiece. In the Pits is partnered with Compete. Compete is a Texas-based brand by Jell Stewart of professional team AC Diesel that provides custom jerseys, pants, headbands, straps, tech shirts, and any other soft goods to help individuals and teams compete at the highest level. Support Texas Paintball and message Compete on Facebook or Instagram and mention In the Pits podcast for 10% off your entire order. In the Pits is partnered with Get That Shot. Get That Shot now offers first-in-line photo and video editing, 20% off Get That Shot merch, and 20% off prints to all teams that wear the Get That Shot logo on their jersey. Message Get That underscore Shot on Facebook or Instagram to become a Get That Shot program team. In the Pits is partnered with Paintball Kumite. Paintball Kumite is a program designed by Colt Roberts of professional team San Antonio X-Factor to take paintball players of all ages experience levels, and skill groups and mold them into champions. The program breaks the game down into small, easy-to-learn sessions designed to help you master the fundamentals so that you can elevate your game. Newcomers to the program get a free one-hour introductory class when mentioning In the Pits. To sign up for a class, message at paintballkumite on Instagram. Drinking water all day at your tournaments and still feel tired? What if we could hydrate you from the cellular level? At BioWorks Mobile IV Service, our licensed professionals understand what it takes to get through a long day of exercise. We use all natural vitamins to increase hydration, recovery, and prolonged athletic endurance. Help your team get to the podium. Book now by texting the number on your screen or calling today. Call 972-948-8207 to book now. That's 972-948-8207. BioWorks. Hydrate. Win. Repeat.
Welcome everybody to episode 91 of In the Pits Paintball Podcast. This podcast is focused on everything that has to do with the paintball scene here in Texas, from professional players and teams to new divisional programs, local tournament series, field owners, Texas-based brands, even photographers and videographers. Every week we will have a short and sweet episode with a new topic and a new special guest. I'm Christian Dallas-Smith. I'm a player for the Texas Titans. In this episode, we are going in the pits with Benjamin Schrader, the general manager for Outlaw Paintball, player for semi-pro team Smoke, and coach of Cap City Charge. Benji, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing really, really good. I appreciate you having me on. Um, It's an honor. Big fan of the show. So, yeah, man. I appreciate it. I think you're doing some really cool things for the Austin scene, especially. Um, Like, even long before you got hired as general manager, um, there have been a couple of things that I think a lot of people have noticed online that you've been posting uh, that uh, like the breakfast club thing, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, uh, that people, I think, in the Austin area started really like kind of attaching to. And as a result, like you're starting to see uh, even more like engagement and improvement coming out of that scene. Yeah, 100 percent, man. Yeah. Breakfast Club has been huge for us. It's just. You know, I love the Austin scene so much, right? Like, and I want to just see us all collectively get better. And um, anything I can do as like the GM, like becoming the GM, doing the breakfast club thing, um, just to like kind of push everybody that plays at Outlaw just to become a better paintball player. Um, dude, that's just kind of like where my heart is. So it's kind of, uh, you know, what, what my big focus is, especially with like the general manager job that I uh, just recently taken on. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I want to cover kind of a little bit of everything that you're doing. So let's uh, let's get started. So this first question is brought to us by XTPL Events. So for those listening that maybe don't know about you, how long have you been involved in the Texas paintball scene? Uh, man, so um, I'm not originally from Texas. I transplant, as most people in Austin. Um, so I got here in 2018-ish um started playing shortly after that so i think you know if you're talking collective years around six years um i was out at um texas paintball first that's kind of like where i got first into the scene gotcha did you play before coming to texas or not at all yeah yeah so my lineage goes way back for sure not in texas but um i'm a midwest guy so Um, I actually started playing in Louisville, Kentucky, out of field um, uh, called Asylum Paintball uh, when I was 13. Damn. All right. So so tell me, what were some of the teams that you've played for over the years? Oh, man. So, uh, I mean, obviously, when I was back in when I was back in Kentucky, it was Asylum Kids, right? That's when I was younger. But man, I, I would have to go reference kind of the, the APPA right? <laughs> at this point to, to kind of remember everything. Um, but here in Texas, uh, when I first got here, I started with Victoria um, from Victoria. Had a little stint with the Austin Kings that were out of outlaw for a minute um, and then went to uh, hypnotic. So I guess in Texas, those are kind of like the teams that I have played for the most everything else has kind of been country or yeah you know in other countries or um in other leagues around uh the u.s gotcha yeah i know that um yeah and we'll talk about this more in a little bit i know that you've at least according to your pb leagues profile it looks like you didn't start playing tournaments until 2019 with victoria but I mean, you've got a ton of teams under your belt in the very short time that you've been playing, or at least short yeah. relative to uh, a lot of others and that have been in the game for a little while now. Yeah, and no, I know 100 percent. It's it's kind of crazy. Yeah. If you look, if you like look at it, um, obviously, you know, tournament wise. Yeah. But, you know, I've always sort of had a paintball gun in my hand, but. You know, I think that's just kind of where my path was. It's like not playing tournaments, really organized, um, official until I really, really got to Texas. So, you know, good place to start, though. <laughs> oh, 100%. Yeah, Texas is where it's at. Definitely. Yeah. So this question is brought to us by Skull Monkeys Paintball. What was it that got you into paintball to begin with? Oh, man, that is a, that is a good a good story, a good question. So... 
before I was in uh, Kentucky, I lived in uh, Mississippi down by the Gulf Coast. So we uh, moved to Kentucky after Hurricane Katrina. And that's like, you know, we had lost our home. It was just a really bad situation. Um, and then, so we went to, we were displaced. And we went to Louisville. And uh, my aunt, we were staying with my aunt on her couch at the time. And like, obviously going through uh, everything that comes with like a natural disaster, right? You're like trying to process all of this stuff. And I think in my mind at the time too, I didn't really understand what was going on. I couldn't really grasp the severity of it, but I just knew that we weren't going to be able to go home, right? Like there was no home. I, my entire neighborhood was just completely wiped out. So, you know, kind of like being bummed on that, obviously, my mom was just not only trying to like figure out like, okay, well, you know, what do I do? Like, how do I got to get him into school? But then I also got to like get his mind off of, you know, losing his home and his friends and his life back in, um, back in Mississippi where we're from. So my aunt randomly just was one day and uh, was like, well, why don't we just like, there's a paintball field, like right down the street. Why don't we just take, take him to paintball? And that was asylum paintball. <laughs> and so they took me uh, to asylum like in the middle of the day. Um, and like I walked in and Kenny, uh, uh, the shop owner, was just like, you know, kind of introduced himself. You know, we kind of told him what was going on. And he gave me like a, a JT jersey that was three times too big for me. I think he hooked me up with like some other soft good stuff. And he was just like, come back this weekend. And so I walked. I obviously like took all that stuff and you know seemed cool but like i had I'd had a pinball gun in my hand like when i was a kid like playing in the woods right like you know with a titman like we all do but like i never really had been to a field per se so i went back that weekend and uh <laughs> came in with man uber i came in with a chest protector full full head uh full mask full head covering and uh yeah and i never left after that i was my first job <laughs> started refing there and yeah just became a little shop grom just running around trying to get paint money so and <clears throat> i love it just uh yeah everyone starts somewhere right and we all have kind yeah, of those sure. those early days yeah. of the the head game not quite being where it is now oh, yeah the style was lacking brother but then they soon like as soon as i got came on the scene like one of like he's like my big brother brad and he plays they play in the tin all these guys too play in the tin man events at nxl so when i see them it's always like kind of a blast from the past we always laugh about it but one of the refs at the time is uh brad he was in high school i was like in middle school so he kind of like became my big brother and he got me together real quick on the style game like after that <laughs> he's like throw all that crap away <laughs> Love it. So. Yeah, get this man a Dana. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, short came shortly after that. Awesome. All right. Uh, yeah, here in the chat, you got a couple of fans here. You got uh, Dan Shelley saying, Benji, the hardest worker in Texas. I definitely uh, definitely will put you up there on that one. Uh, Neil Day says, Breakfast Club alums checking in. Uh, Enzo's in here. Lasro Lopez says, Benji, everyone watching, hit the like button. Appreciate that last row all right so this next question is brought to us by pod runners union so what are some things that have changed within the texas scene either for better or for worse since you've become a part of it yeah man that is a that's a good question can i was like i was you, know, you had kind of sent some of them over before and i was looking at that when i was trying to think you know like being that i've got you know six years you know i don't know what all I could say that has relative change necessarily within that time. So I like try to take it a layer deeper and I'm like, well, you know, upon like when I played was started here in 2019, like, you know, we were still doing like the numbers on the side of the hoppers. And then it just, I came back and then the numbers were gone. Everybody still had tight pants on. Like, <laughs> I was like, what happened? <laughs> like, whoa, it hasn't been that long guys. So aside from the style, um i would say probably like with the like the uh what's the word i'm looking for like the the how where where fit is now like 
their assimilation right into where they are like currently right now i think that has made um pb fit as like a field um and just like what they have out there the place to be right it's it's kind of made it like the 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 holy grail of the texas scenes where it's like you know if you want to go you know whether whatever your goal is right if you want to go play for a team and you're you're at a field that doesn't have a lot of teams or you know they i I know everybody like guys have a specific style out there right and you can see that style of play in a bunch of other scenes um like even from the calls and like um the style i mean i would say the style too i think they have really put themselves at the top of like the texas list where people want to go there to play to be seen to play on teams to be a part of that community i mean you look on you know online and social media right like that's the coverage of texas that you see because you've got verbal out there you've got you know um yosh out there right you've got people documenting this stuff and that is kind of like catapulted them to when people think of texas like everywhere i go everywhere that i've played people are like yo what's fit like what's fit like what's fit like i'm like it's dope (laughs) like so that's that's what i think has like changed the most at least in my eyes that's become like the mecca of paintball um here at least so yeah fits fits rise over the last couple of years they've definitely earned their spot as like the crown jewel yeah. of Texas paintball for sure. But I will, I will say that in turn, they've kind of been a catalyst or I don't, I don't know if lightning rods, the correct word at times, but there's been a lot of, uh, a lot of organizations, a lot of players, teams that have been motivated to kind of knock fit off of their pedestal at times. And I think that's, uh, I, I think overall that's a good thing, right? Cause for yeah. a while, at least in the local scene, like kind of in the years leading up to COVID, it felt like fit had a pretty strong grasp, like fit teams in general, not just paintball fit themselves, even though they were a part of it, like teams like, um, TOG or, Mm -hmm. uh, shut up or trying or greed, like all of those teams, they had a pretty strong grasp on the local scene. And then you've got teams kind of rising up, from all sorts of areas in Texas to, uh, you know, take control back or, or put themselves on top. Like teams like the ATX Kings, uh, won the series in what, 2018 in D four. Uh, you've got the Texas Titans rising up balls out Houston zone elite, the donut shop mm-hmm. mafia from El Paso. Like the, there's yeah. all sorts of regions that have risen up in Texas because of what fit has like kind of paved the way for. Yeah. Trailblazers. Right. I mean, everybody, they've kind of laid the blueprint out of like, this is how you want to be successful. It can be done. Right. So then that's good. That's healthy competition. Right. And I think, you know, that's good for all of the other regions because they're like, Oh yeah, we can do this too. Like we have our field, like we have an infrastructure and, you know, um, it's got to start with somebody though, right? Like, and I, I love that dude. And I can't wait till, you know, outlaw is something like that. And where like, you know, we have uh, a brand of a style, a brand of playing, like people are like, man, you know what? Like there's hella good teams out in Austin. Like, you know, we're still working to get there. Um, mm-hmm. But I think, you know, we're, we're well on our well on our way man and, and it has definitely kind of laid the the blueprint for that absolutely i think the biggest thing that fit brought was a sense of stability in their local area uh yeah and i think moves like i uh, you know outlaw hiring you as general manager is gonna help bring stability or bring more stability to the austin area and we'll should see uh you know the fruits of that kind of popping up over the course of the season yeah, no, you definitely will, man. You definitely will. We've got big things in store. It's a it's a huge undertaking, don't get me wrong, but you know, in the short amount of time that I've already been able to like kind of get my hands on stuff, um, you know, I think the the players can probably attest to um seeing significant changes, right? And um one step at a time though. <laughs> yeah, for sure. 
Uh, in the chat here, Bryce Pop says the cutest paintballer in Texas right here. There we go, man. I'm, I was not invited to the award ceremony in Vegas <laughs> for that one. So maybe I'll, next year. But. I'll have to make it a category on the In the Pits Awards next year. <laughs> Please do. Got to get a petition going. Oh, yeah. Uh, Neil Day says, Britt says you're a genuinely special person to meet, Benji. Oh, shout out to Britt. She's killing it right now, by the way, with her photos. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were talking about media stuff. Um, shout out to my man, Dan too, for taking home, um, that award. That was, that was huge. Don't worry, Dan, Shelly, I've not forgotten about you. I'm just waiting to craft the most perfect post to shout you out. So don't worry about that brother. Um, but those are two people that I cannot like just thank enough. And Brittany's killing it with her photos. Dan's killing it with his photos. Like he comes out all the time and, and just documenting our scene, which is like what we, you know, like that fit has, right. That's kind of where it starts. Like, you know. Um, just what we're doing out there every weekend and, you know, the guys get, get some sick photos from it. And, um, so yeah, you know, shout out to both of those guys. Oh yeah. Uh, Enzo in the chat, he says, Benji, can you give us a sneak peek with what you plan to do for outlaw? Enzo, don't you worry. We're going to cover that here in a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tell Enzo that I told him one of his, uh, <laughs> all of cap city. If you're watching, you need guys need to be in bed. Right, you guys need to get some sleep. I told you eight eight plus hours right this week every day. <laughs> Love it, get them. <laughs> All right, so uh, you you played a little bit with Victoria in 2019, but as far as your yeah. the level of your current involvement, it didn't really start until 2022. So, what differences yeah. have you noticed in the local level of competition between pre COVID and post COVID? Oh man, well I think uh, yeah, like. So that's, you know, that's a, um, that, that has multiple, that answer has multiple layers. So in 2019, yeah, I started playing with Victoria and it was actually funny, like kind of came full circle with, with me being in Vegas this past year or this past event. Mm -hmm. Um, he like with Victoria, I, we, we had trained that whole off season. That was kind of a newer team for, uh, Texas paintball, um, up in Jonestown and I actually got hurt before the first event. Um, I hurt my knee pretty seriously, so I wasn't able to play. Um, I had done gone through the whole off season and, and training and, and doing our two a days every weekend, and so that like that really crushed me and kind of bummed me out. And I tried to push through um, and play after Vegas, but it was just kind of the knee just was not responding well. Um, so that's kind of when I led into, um, the Austin Kings. Now we were still going around and, and skirmishing people and everything like that. Um, but at least for like the Victoria time period, um, it was really hard for me to kind of get on the field with those guys. That's actually where I played with, uh, Chavez, mm -hmm. believe it or not back in, back in his early days when he was out there with us. Um, but I guess, you know, to, to answer um kind of the difference part of the question i think i think since 2019 and i mean in that short amount of time at least in texas for sure the level of talent has just been crazy like just when you just like the level of talent and then like the level of the paintball iq that has come along with that you know, it's, it's, it's even when I got here, it, it was kind of like, you know, you kind of show up and you just got a ragtag group of people and you go play and stuff. But now it's like the level of, um, involvement from people in their camps, the strategy that goes into it, the athleticism of maybe it's just cause I'm getting older. I don't know, <laughs> but the level of the level of athleticism that you see kids have and kind of how they come out of the gate playing. Right. Where it took kind of some of us years to figure out the right way. You know what I mean? And I still sometimes level of talent kind of like starting out has um, changed uh, a whole lot. And again, going back, not to be a dead horse, but going back to the whole, you know, uh, rise of, of PB Fit and their whole deal. You know what I mean? It's like as soon as they started to get notoriety it's like oh everybody else was like all right i gotta step my game up like that could be me one day too so 100 percent, yeah and i i know i harp on it from time to time on the show but just the 
the way you worded it, having to figure it out for ourselves back when we were first coming up, because that was yeah. rough for a lot oh, of man. us. Yeah. Yeah. You're just out there getting shot and you're, <laughs> and you're like, what the hell is going on, man? Like, you know, I feel like I just learned how to you know, hold my gun the right way. Like last week, dude, these kids are, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. these kids are just out here killing it, man. It's crazy. But yeah. like the resource people have too, right? Like that's exactly you know. what I'm getting at. Like for for some of us that started learning the game like pre COVID and even earlier than that, it was like, hey, the the first thing that you're learning is how to get bunkered over and over and over again. <laughs> is that yeah. like, yeah, once. And for a lot of us, like, I feel like that's why the scene wasn't nearly as big as it could have been because uh, the mentality back then was like, Hey, fresh meat, you know, like I don't get this opportunity very often. So I'm going to get this, you know, I'm going to go put this guy into the dirt. I don't care if he's a new player, but nowadays it's like, Hey, there's, there's a new player. Let's get him into our camp so that we can train them the right way. And then they can become a weapon for us down the road thousand percent man that level of like i mean i catch myself doing it sometimes too like when i go around to like other fields here and like if i see a kid like a younger a younger guy and or a girl and i'm just like like just you look at like you're watching like oh how they move like how they're holding their gun like you know how they're coming out of their bunker and you're like oh that kid you know you might have something there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're like, hey, man, you play for a team? <laughs> and that's like, the, that's the question, right? Right. I feel like what is old is new again. Like way back in the day, it was like these 40 something year old guys going up to the kids like, hey, kid, you want to run the snake for us? And now we're kind of, you know, we're, we're back to that, except, uh, you know, we're a lot more structured and organized in the way that we approach that. Like with these programs that, and I mean the word program, like teams, top to bottom, multiple divisions that are pulling Mm -hmm. these players in and they're staying with the same group of guys or girls for multiple seasons. They're getting like the fundamentals down. They're able to hold each other accountable. Like they, they find value in the group of people that they're with. And then because they're with the same group of people for two, three, four plus seasons, like they're learning the whole communication aspect a lot faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no facts. And that's, you know, if you can get a person, a kid that's coming in, um, let's just call it, you know, 15, right? Like we've got a couple of them here that I, I've, you know, just, I see out playing around on, on some of our different teams here. And, you know, you get that kid in, you just kind of, you, you nurture that talent and you kind of really, at that point, you're just like, you try to keep them in the game, right? Like you keep it, you get a kid in at 15 and, you know, it's just kind of like, I mean, it's, it happens. You, you've seen a story over and over. A kid comes in 15 and just falls in love with paintball, starts working at the local field, plays with the local team. And then you look up and, you know, now that kid's like crushing it in 21, 22, and he's still in the sport. You know what I mean? And he's like still in the sport. He's still killing it. And that, by that time, like, you know, he's they've kind of grown into their, their, their style and their play. And um, we need – you know, we need more of that, right? I feel like for a time that was, that's been lost and like paintball was such, so treated that as a way that it was kind of like, it, I mean, it is, and it is in an essence a hobby, right? But it's treated more as like an actual sport to where like now I see kids like, you're like, I'm not playing football or basketball or baseball. Like, no, paintball is like what I play. You know what I mean? And the parents are down for it. Like, my, you know, my mom supported it, but at the same time, it's like, you know, right. you know, it's not like it got to a certain point where it's like, I can't really, you know, can't really help you out with that. Now, like parents are like down for that. And that's what kids are focused on. And so it's cool to see and if we can get like that's uh, when I see that stuff at Outlaw too, it's like kids that are just super down. I want to nurture that. And I want to like, hey, dude, like keep coming back. Work here, man. Like we can help you out. Like I know you don't have a job right now, but you can, if you work here for us, like, you know, this can help you play more. Right. And um, you just get more stoked on the game. And that's how you build a community. So definitely. I think two prime examples are two kids that play on both of our teams, like Connor Sanders, who I remember back when I was student teaching in 2019, uh, for, uh, I was teaching over at a high school over at, uh, 
was Westwood High School, and one of the choir directors there was next door neighbors with Connor's family. And she texted me out of the blue and was like, hey, I've got a kid that is like interested in getting into paintball. And I'm like, yeah, bring him over. And, you know, I introduced him to what I I don't remember if they were hypnotic by then or if they were still the ATX Kings. But like Mm -hmm. eventually, like kind of that relationship formed and blossomed. And, uh, you know, now his whole family is like super into it. And he just played his first semi pro event this uh, at Vegas. And then another kid, uh, another kid, Bryson who's on the Titans mm-hmm. now. He was on hypnotic for a while. I know he played a couple of events with notorious and, uh, his dad's super into it and he works for outlaw on Saturday. And then on Sunday he come makes the drive down to X factor to come play with us. So, uh, you're seeing that you more guys, and more. Oh yeah, man. Those are two, two special guys right there for sure. A hundred percent. I'm really, really proud of, of both of those guys. And I'm excited to, you know, not only see them for this upcoming USXBL event, but just like, what their careers end up evolving into should they pursue it more. Right. So definitely. And not to kind of, you know, harp on it too much, but I do want to give a nod because this was another thing that paintball fit was successful at with the AC kids program a couple of years back. Mm-hmm. Like they were kind of the first team that was almost entirely teenagers that had like the full parental support. They had organizational support and now like, that's been another roadmap that other uh, teams and organizations can follow when bringing their own youth talent in. Yeah. Oh, facts, man. And I'm trying to, you know, that's something that's in the works for, for us at outlaw. Um, You know, it's, it's probably, you know, I want to get through this first season or this first year um, Mm -hmm. in the seat where I've got to like take care of some other infrastructure stuff. But ultimately for me, that's what I want to do for us is to like because long after i'm done playing like what what interests me a lot is coaching you know i i just you know i love the coaching aspect of the game i love talking x and o's of the game and like um and i think that what a perfect way to to leave a little bit of a legacy if i can at outlaw with you know i know they had odk back in the day so like maybe you know we bring something like that back or you know because you know as special as a place as outlaw is and like especially given it's like location you know what i mean i just think that adds to the that adds to the lore of our field and and if we had something like a product per se that we could put on the field and have kids that just come up playing for us and you know either then they either we take a program to the high level right or like we're a factory of like we just churn out talent because we know how to develop it right i think that'd be something really special for us so you know i hope we can get there and i think we will okay. oh definitely i think we're going to see that uh at y'all's field at uh pretty much all across texas uh here in the chat uh Dan Schulten asks, Vegas had a huge semi-pro division with 30 teams, but a lot of them could have played D2 or possibly even lower. So do you think playing up into semi-pro helps these teams or would they be better off going into Sunday in D2 or a lower division? And that's a great question. I, I have seen a lot of, <laughs> a lot of those comments on uh, various different posts on Facebook before the event. Um, what I could say to that is I think that, you know, it depends on it's, it's situational, right? I think if a team is full of, of guys that are, you know, D3 and D4, do I think it would be more advantageous for them to play and have success in their own division? You know, 100%. Like, you know, that is a, that is a huge bite to take, um, playing up that high um now if you're an individual excuse me if you're an individual who like you know i'm here maybe it's just because you haven't played a lot of tournaments some of the best paintball players i know and i can say this just did don't you know don't play a lot of tournaments so their rank isn't where it's at i mean if you want that if you want that confirmed go out to california dog full of full of dogs that will travel anywhere and just can't get out to a lot of the nxl events so like you look at their appa and you're like you know deep whatever so like if you're that if you're a player like that and you're looking to like man i want to play against top level competition then you know go to a tryout 
you know, see you needs a body like and go try your hand at it. But I think as a team and I heard I was listening to um, I forgot who it was. It was a uh, one of the one of the paintball podcasts the other day. And I was like, you know, uh, actually, no, it was uh, the new coach for Notorious. Um, he, he played with or he coached KC All Stars. You look at those guys like ring by ring they cut they like okay we're dominated d4 we dominated d3 you know, dominated etc cetera, etc cetera. i think that is the that is the tried and true method right because in that way like once you get to that that point you know like you're like all right cool you know we're ready right and maybe you set up some scrims and you're like all right yeah we can hang here um but you know there's a reason why you're able to <laughs> there's a reason why you're so easily able to play up as a team um and there's like you know nobody's telling you you can't right because it's more money for whoever you're paying it to so <laughs> you know it is what it is man some people want to want to you know have that i guess that on their resume i guess you know what i mean but you know everybody's different yeah, I think there's kind of a misconception when they first come in is like, oh, I want to get all of the ranking points that I possibly can get early on. That way people see me as a better player. Like, that's not the case at all. I think it's got to be quite the opposite. Like, play the lowest level that you can for as long as you can. Like, if you're ranked D5, go play D5 events because there are, mm -hmm. like, even if it's considered the lowest level, there's still lessons, like, very crucial lessons to be learned at every division d5 you gotta is, pay your dues, man. yeah you have got to pay your dues 100 percent. Like, i mean imagine you. imagine you're like a d4 or a d3 player like maybe you were like middle of the pack possibly like quarterfinals team in d4 you try to go up and play semi-pro and you're playing against some of these teams that went through that process they learned the lessons in d5 they learned the lessons in d4 and d3 and in d2 like you've got a lot of catching up to do and that's an incredibly rough way to do it but on top of that like yeah. once you do it it's next to impossible to go back like once once you yeah. play just two semi-pro events like you're not going to be able to go play d5 or d4 anymore the lowest you can probably play is d3 at that point which is a very tough division on its own. It's so much about like really mastering your communication and team play at that point. Yeah. And I think there's a bunch of different factors there too, to consider like, because, you know, and like earlier on in my career, you sometimes you get hamstrung by like the team that you're with and like, maybe you want to play more tournaments, right. But your team like isn't playing a ton of tournaments right and you were like i just want to play more tournaments i want to get more exposure i want to play in different areas so you start to progress points wise like because you're you know, you're still playing you know d4 you know even d5 but like you as you start doing better and better your points get higher and then your peers points are kind of staying the same because like maybe they're only playing a certain number of events and then you also have to <clears throat> excuse me factor in like where are you at in the country you know what i mean like are you in an area where you can only play four events like you know what i mean like then then you're like okay well i got to travel to go play these other events and you're doing well and you're getting more points and whatnot and like maybe your goal is to get as high as you can and go as high as you can and you know but that's why i said right great you have to like <clears throat> pay your dues like you have to go through that fire you have to like if that's your sister what you have to go through that fire and learn those lessons every step of the way whether that's with a team or if that's like you by yourself and kind of you know going to play with a bunch of dudes you don't know <laughs> like i'm walking proof of that right so yeah definitely i mean if it if it happens like if you're playing on a different team every single event but you're like learning those lessons in those divisions then yeah sure uh but mm -hmm. Jumping from D4 to semi-pro, skipping three divisions is... Uh, Wouldn't recommend it, man. You're going to have a very, very shitty time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely. All right. Oh, so man. this next question is brought to us by BEMRAP. So unlike others, and this is kind of the exact conversation that we were just uh, having, so great segue. So unlike others that have come on the show, you've played for a lot of different organizations during your relatively short career in paintball. 
and you also do a lot of traveling. You play in the NXL, WCPPL, ASG Local Series, ICPL, USXBL, Bunker Fest, XTPL, Star Series. You've even gone to Europe to play in semi pro there. So uh, it seems like the bug bit you especially hard last year where you played 16 events in 2023. So what got you to commit this hard? Yeah, dude. I mean, that's, it's just nuts to hear, like, when you say it, like, how many events, it's like cramming, I don't know, however many seasons into one. Um, <laughs> I think, you know, for me, it was, it was sort of that same situation that we talked about, right? Like, you know, when I started playing in 2019 with Victoria, um, you know, obviously missed the first event, played with the Kings for a little bit, what were for what my knee allowed. And we, yeah, I think we all kind of went on a little bit of a, a hiatus there with with COVID and everything like that. And um, when I came back, you know, finally ended up having the, having my knee surgery, and that's when I got linked up with a hypnotic. And um, when I started playing with hypnotic, like we're going into the USXB, I, it was funny. Like I just kind of showed up one day, and, and Joe was like right across the table from me, and he's like, "Oh shit, Benji, what's up?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, hey, what's up, dude?" And he was like, "Dude, if you want to come back, and like, you know, we got a D4 team, and and I, we just had a guy leave and whatever." So I'm I'm getting ready for that event, and I end up pulling my hamstring like oh, no. something gnarly, dude. And I'm like, "Oh my god, here we go again," and so miss that. It was like a USX, uh, I think it was it was one of the first events in Dallas and missed mm -hmm. that, had to rehab for a little bit, came back. So I essentially that season that I came back, I missed half of it, played the USXBL and then maybe like one or two in XLs. And then I was like, you know what, like I want to. I just want to get back to a level of of playing and training and and seeing how really far I can take it. You know what I mean? And then also too, that was around the time that um I got sober as well. Um and you know, I why, you know, I had a thing that was why paintball, right? It's it's it, a large part of it is because of my sobriety. So, you know, as involved as I am, staying committed to something, you know, showing up, holding myself accountable, like those are all things that um you know i have to do to to stay sober right so kind of a part of it's a little bit of it's it's a part of that as well um but yeah you know as far as the events go like i'm like i just want to play as many events as i can i want to earn everything that i get and though and, and in my mind right like you know no discredit to any of the, the the you know the hypnotic guys or anything like that but that's exactly what i was saying right it was like you know, I'm playing these events with hypnotic guys, like, you know, for whatever reasons, they're not going, you know, national, they're not playing any other series, like, I want to keep playing because I want to keep progressing my career. And that was the way to do that. And then also on top of that, if you think about it, when you play these different events, and you meet these different people, and you put yourself out there, you build connections, and you build a network in different paintball communities to where, you know, now I can call a homie up in California and be like, hey, dude, like, you know, whether it's me, like, you know, now not so much the case because I'm kind of solidified on it on a, on a team now. But, um, you know, we're in past like, like, hey, dude, I want to come out and play WC. Do you know any teams out there that need an extra body or do you that need an attacker? Yeah, cool, dude. I know so and so. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me link you up. Right. And it's as easy as that. Right. Like, now I'm on a roster. Right. And, and, and playing this event. And, um, you know, a big thing about that. Also, too, with that is like for the NXL, the leftovers when I first got started were were huge for me. Like that was huge. Like just going on the Facebook wall and be like, hey, I want to play this event. You know, shout out to Matt Ingles as well. Um, he was a big driver in that. And for me doing that on the leftovers. Right. That's how I got linked up with the Chiefs. Right. And, you know, how, you know, all the guys that I knew on the Chiefs. Right. That's kind of how I uh ended up on smoke right so it's like all of this stuff putting yourself out there earning your stripes making sure you get access to like all other all uh different types of talent in different areas of the country as well different play styles and stuff so that was a kind of part of it and you know i just want to you know the goal is right to to one day kind of 
you know, be on a pro roster, obviously, and you got to earn your stripes in order to get there. Right. So that was playing that many tournaments um, was kind of the driving force into like accomplishing all of those things. And then also, too, it's not so much now, but my mindset then, uh, because I took the job at Outlaw, but my mindset then was like, if you look at, you know, any series, you have, I mean, what, maybe four or five events, maybe something like that, right? And they're spread out, like maybe one or two are close, like, you know, for NXL, for example, like we had it in March, like the one in March, and then, you know, we have another one in April, and then we have a long break. Like, the breaks are like two months. Right. In any other sport, that's an off season. <laughs> you know, like any other sport, that is an entire off season. So like you, like you're in season, but like in your next event is not until two months. And then you're like, well, I'm not really playing a whole lot. I got to get back into like, you know, event shape and, you know, my training ramps up. I didn't want to break. I wanted my season to be continuous because then that way, every event that I go into, I'm like this. It's not my Super Bowl, and like you see it a lot of times with with people. Like you know, when they go play an event every now and then, it's like every event that they go to is just like this is this is the Super Bowl. And I'm not saying like you don't want to go there and have a, an idea of winning, right? But like you want to, you don't want to like put an event on a pedestal, and you just want to be like, all right, cool, yeah, got another tournament. Like we're gonna go, we're gonna go handle it. It's just like another at bat in baseball, right? Like all right, you know, we got dogged in Dub C. But you know what? We got USXBL in two weeks, so it's time to flip the script and, and go get ready for that. So that that was at least my mindset. And I think though that experience, which is going to be a little bit different this year because I because of taking the job at Outlaw, I'm not I have to kind of take this season to to really just focus on an XL and then get us off the ground to where we can be running like that. And I mean, you know, paintball fields run on the weekend, right? So that was my sacrifice and my concession um, to not play all of those events, which I think, you know, for right now is good. Um, but anybody that is looking to, you know, kind of progress and get better, I think as much as you can like afford and figure out ways to play as many tournaments as possible do it man like do it definitely i mean your commitment was like definitely a huge undertaking last season like that's an average of an event every three weeks yeah like yeah there was like times i was hopping off a plane dude i would man you know coming going from flying into la playing a dub c Getting back, going right to like uh, <laughs> layout we can practice for in Excel, <laughs> like trying to figure out like, oh, who am I going to like, you know, trying to find teams. That's another one, too. Like, mm. you know, you're trying to find teams. And then at that point, too, like, you know, especially when you're playing with the leftovers, like you're you're staying on your own, like you're figuring out rental cars. Um, you know, you're sleeping in airports, dude. It was. <laughs> it's, yeah. Some of the some of the places that I've slept for paintball tournaments is crazy. It's 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 actually it's actually egregious. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, working. I like I can't imagine just like especially with how much traveling that was involved in that, like the trip to Europe, how often you were in California. Yeah. Like it has to have gotten quite expensive doing all of this. Like, have you been able to leverage like any sponsorship or other fundraising for paintball to help you out with this at all? Yeah, dude. So uh, when I was doing all of that stuff, um, I did not really, that was like all on me. Like that was all financially, that was all on me. And, you know, at the time, like, thankfully I was blessed with a job, excuse me. Uh, I was in, I was in recruiting staffing and I did sales for that. Luckily enough, like the stars aligned where I just had, um, like, you know, wasn't by no means living the life of Riley, but like everything. And that's like, this is how deep my commitment was. And like, why I say like, you know, some people want to be paintball players, but they don't want to do what paintball players need to do. Like what you have to do, like what sacrifices are you willing to make to be great? Because I'm willing, I'm willing to, you know, every, every dollar that I have that doesn't go towards, you know, you know, taking obviously care of the essentials, right? Like my rent and my food. Like I'm willing to sacrifice everything else going out to eat. Obviously I don't drink anymore, but like, 
you know, if I were going out to bars or like, you know, going out to do certain extracurricular things or, you know, buying stuff, whatever that looks like, right? Like I'm, I'm willing to take everything that I have outside of taking care of my essentials to put towards my paintball. Like, and that's what I did. And that's, that's essentially where there were some times, man, where like, you know, you had to kind of like go without some things for sure. You know what I mean? But you figure it out. Like I've, you know, figured out places to stay. I've figured out how to get to and from events. Like, and then I think from that, it just kind of like, there is a little bit of a blind faith in there, but you know, it worked out. Right. So, um, you know, no, there was no financial, no sponsorship or financial backing uh <laughs> helping me out during that time period hopefully maybe that'll change one day you know but um you know nothing during that time right well i mean that's that's a life of a professional athlete right you see that in other sports like football baseball gymnastics like swimming like all of these families like granted like the age group for the athletes are much younger but you see it all the time. These families that are sacrificing everything to put their kid in like special training camps or like get them special coaching equipment, things like yeah. that. Um, and that's, I mean, that's what's almost required to compete at that level. Or if you want to eventually become a pro athlete, right? You it, yeah, you got to do it, dude. And that's another conversation that I had, you know, that you have to have with yourself that I had with myself. It's like, yeah, I'm not at, I'm not a pro by any means. Right. And um, you know, who knows if that will ever happen, but just because you're not a professional, if you really, really want to be good, good at something and, and you really want to put your all into it, like you got to act like a professional, you have to train like a professional, you have to treat this like a professional would treat it. Right. So that's why, you know, that, you know, the, uh, when I talked about kind of diverting money to paintball, right. That money went to obviously all my travel paint costs, um, you know, I train with with uh, OTL and Patty Gleason, right, to make sure that my body's primed and ready. You know, I uh, food, right, my nutrition, like I might spend a little bit more on high quality food and, and, and try to stay away from from lower quality stuff because I know how it makes me feel on the days of events and leading up to events and training. And it's like when you're doing as much um, as I do, right, like just you know, one little Snickers bar dude hurts you know, like when you're trying to get through, you know, especially like when you're getting in your thirties, you're like, ah, oh, man, you know, that iced caramel macchiato from Starbucks is hurting me right now. You know what I mean? Like, so you've got to like, you really got to be on top of that stuff and, and, um, and make the proper sacrifices and treat it like a professional would treat it. So that's what I tried to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Here in the chat, um, let's see here. We've got, uh, uh hellos from, uh, JC Lamone of Uno's jerky. I uh, got, let's see last row is saying that, uh, Jaden works at outlaw as well. He's excited for that. Uh, Enzo says Thank shout out know. to the, uh, Sanders family, best paintball parents out there. I can definitely attest to that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> See, Brittany Day is in the chat, says the paintball world really is like a family. I've only been involved for a few months and feel so welcomed. Benji always acknowledges everyone and greets me every time, always has a smile on his face. Oh, yeah, dude. All right, let's see. Lasro Lopez says his favorite, his, your favorite time is coaching Oni. <laughs> oh, he, hey, that was a great time, man. If you've never hung out with the Oni guys at an event or seen them, at a, you talk about a team that is building a culture. Those guys, that is a culture over there mm -hmm. for sure. And, and Mr. Lopez is at the head of that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the head of that thing. <laughs> yeah, we had the pleasure. The Titans had a pleasure of, uh, bringing a few guys over to come play with us at the, uh, in D five for world cup this past, uh, this past November. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. yeah definitely can, uh, confirm those statements. Let's see. Brittany <laughs> says, uh, Brittany says question. Now that you're with outlaw, what are your future plans? We'll definitely get into that in a little bit. Uh, Papa Chapa says, uh, 16 events in one season. Benji is the meme where it says, if I won the lottery, I wouldn't tell anyone, but there would be signs. <laughs> shout out to chop man <laughs> oh yeah all right this next question is uh brought to us by mariachi aguilas de oro so how would you compare the different regions and series that you've taken part in either 
through like the production level, the level of competition? Like how, how would you compare all of the different places that you've been in? Yeah, man, um, that's, I, that's super interesting. And I think like, you don't know until you play it, until you play in these different areas of the world. Um, and you really wouldn't think about it. Like, you know, if I was, if I had stayed in the Midwest playing, you know, my entire career, like, you know, that's probably all I would know. Right. Obviously is like playing in the Midwest. Um, and that's, and like, this is how everybody plays paintball, but it's not, man. I mean, like we talked about it earlier on, like, you know, how the, I call it like the fit style, right? Like Mm. lockdown, like super disciplined and, you know, very just fundamentally sound, like we're going to sit and stay crossed and we're going to wait for you to make a mistake. Um, that's not the case everywhere. Like, for example, you know, if that's, if that's what we have in Texas, right. Which is like super, I would say disciplined paintball. When you go out to dub C's, which, you know, um, shout out to those guys and Mike and, and just, you talk about a world-class event out there. Like it's probably, I would say dub C's, you know, top to bottom, probably some of the best competition, best runs that I've ever had um, out there. Like you got guys all over Southern California that will drive to the ends of the earth um, to play these events. And, you know, NorCal, SoCal, you know, everywhere, you know, Vegas, uh, Nevada, Utah, like all those guys, because that's all there is out there, really. Um, and those guys you know, get it how they get it, how they can. And, um, they have a lot of my respect because, you know, I know individuals that for practice, like this is for, this is just for practice, bro. Like we'll be two hours away from a field. You know what I mean? And like, we'll drive the two hours to like run drills. Like, you know, and I, I say that because like, I have the luxury of being at the field and playing every day and being right down the street. So it's like, that to me is like a, a crazy level of dedication, right? And their style of play is is very fast, very aggressive. Like, you know, you know when you're playing out there, dude, there's a there's a guy in a freaking, you know, primal head wrap coming to just roast the shit out of you. <laughs> like you just see it streaking. I was like, any minute now, dude, he's gonna come down the stake and like, but that's their that's their style, dude. Like they're going to come get you like they and they they take pride in that and they're going to let you know about it. Right. Um, in Europe. You know, it was crazy because. One thing too, very bright colors out there in Europe, <laughs> like everybody, everybody's filling a pod, smoking a cigarette, drinking a Coca-Cola out there. Um, but like for them, like the four pods. Right. You know, it's it's, you know, a, kind of a it's a a finesse a super kind of like you know sneaky type of attacking type of paintball right like because they only got you only got four pods right so and you know obviously for me you know english was was not everybody's first language out there so like there was a little bit of that when i was playing but um you know the nxl is obviously like a little bit of a hodgepodge and um i think as you uh, competition wise i think you'll find a a strong level of competition and you know everywhere you go i think the biggest difference that i see um at least from like what's in texas and like california is that there's a bigger emphasis in california at all of the fields like asg ambush you know uh used to be camp p before we closed up um uh I think velocity is what it's called. Uh, Tom Martinez has a feel out there. But anyway, the camps out there, like there's a bigger emphasis on Saturday and Sunday practices for their for their teams. Right. So it's not just like, hey, guys, like, you know, we've got three, you know, we've got three, you know, three or four folks coming out. We'll pick up another guy like. No, these teams come out there. These teams come out there Saturday and Sunday. And it's like on set certain fields, you have to sign up for a slot. And this is what really struck me about out there is like I, I went out there to play one time um, and, you know, you have to sign up for a slot and they run it like a split deck. So you're playing a team for maybe 30, 45 minutes to an hour. Right. And then at the end of that time period, you switch, you know, you'll you'll either you know switch the team that you're playing on that field or you will go to another field and play another team. And it's reft. Like, and they run it like that and they keep it organized. So you get like a consistent type game-like practice um, that 
you know, sometimes it's kind of hard to get like at some of these other local fields, like, you know, I can speak for outlaw, right. It's like, you know, who's ever there is like, you know, we're playing and you don't really got to reserve anything and you don't got to like sign up. And, you know, some of your guys might not show up and, you know, it's kind of like, you're, you're just kind of doing whatever when you're at the field, like we have enough guys. Great. Now, like, no, in California, like their teams will practice. And I think that shows in their, in their performance out there as well is that that team consistent team practice like weekend after weekend after weekend um that's why a lot of those camps stay together for a long time Mm -hmm. too right there's not a whole lot of movement like they'll have tryouts yeah sure but their core um stays together um so that's like i think that that that, that struck me as the biggest difference but is in terms of like different scenes you know i don't know what it looks like practice wise and stuff in europe and i imagine you know it's sort of probably spread out a little bit more um and then obviously you know we know kind of what the deal is here in texas but yeah that would be the biggest thing to me that i saw dude is like the solidified camp practices out there are just kind of different than they are here and they're treated a little bit differently as well interesting all right yeah be uh a cool thing to get to experience one day Uh, i know i know that there was one practice where we there was like one layout practice that uh the titans actually helped host like two or three years ago down at x factor where we just ran this giant day where uh we were running like split deck matches uh yeah both fields and i felt like that practice was a pain in the ass to uh help run because i was like the main guy that built the schedule and tried to make sure the fields were running on time but other than like it was definitely in experience that I would love to see a little bit more of. Yeah. It just, was just so like, it was a, and it's a, you know, it is a pain in the ass to, to help kind of organize that. And if I, if I'm thinking of, if every field is in a, some sort of similar situation as we are like you, the manpower is kind of the, is what you kind of lack there. Um, and when I say manpower, I mean like, at least for us, a lot of the kids, either you know i've got one or two player tournament players that work for me right now every other kid is just like a high school kid like just you know working for for some money right they're not like trying to get paid or anything and they don't really know the nuances of paintball so it would be more hand holding to try to like check teams in blow bunkers right. up all of this different so but out there it, it is like you know it's kind of like a it's not a tournament but like they they check everybody in like you grab your paint and you're assigned to a field and away you go. Right. And they have referees, you know, you know, refereeing, of course, but kind of also like just organizing, making sure everything's going as such. So. For sure. Yeah. Well, all right. So this uh, next question is brought to us by paintball Kumite. So uh, talking more about your position with outlaw now as a general manager, uh, which Outlaw being the main uh, tournament paintball park in the Austin area. So tell us, like, how did you come into this position? Yeah, yeah man, that's a good one. Um, so for me, like, I started, like, helping out. This is about the time, like, when I uh, came back to, you know, playing with Hypnotic and stuff. Like, when I got back to Alley's, this is a little bit after COVID. Um, and I was just, like, kind of going there and was looking around this is a part of the resourcefulness about how to like how can i play as much paintball as i can as possible right and i was like oh, well it was like i'm here and I'm, I'm playing like you know however much a case and like all right well i gotta get on a team you know to get you know some tournament pricing that's cool and i'm like well you know how can i what can i do to like supplement the income to to help me buy the paint so then i started like i was like well let me just start refing here Right. I wanted to be around paintball as much as possible. That was the best way to do it. Like, not only am I around the game, I'm around the field, but I'm earning money to pay for my paint. Right. And so that's what I did. I literally just went up to Deb um, and was like, you know, hey, I want to start refing here. And and she didn't know that I was like really just doing it to get paint. Like, <laughs> I mean, you know, I would just get my, it, it got to the point where I would just like, she would pay me and I would just give her the check back. <laughs> like, I was like, <laughs> I was like, you know what I'm going to spend this on. Um, and uh, yeah, dude, I just started doing that. And that was, you know, I, uh, yeah, that was back in maybe two years, two or so years ago. And um, 
just weekend, like every, and it wasn't just like a Saturday here or a Saturday there, dude. I was there. I would come in, practice in the morning, play my points, clock into work, and leave the field at like six. And I would do that Saturday and Sunday. And I did that over the two years. And, and it got to a point where like my professional life in, you know, sales is tough, obviously. Um, it got to the point where, you know, I was kind of, uh, wanting to make a transition out of what I was doing. Um, and you know, I was sitting in bed one night at 4am and I was like, you know what, like, you know, the hell with it. What's the worst thing that she could say is no. Right. So I just sent her a text <laughs> and was like, Hey, what would you, what do you think about like me coming to work for outlaw full time? And, you know, being acting as a general manager and, you know, we, she was like, let's talk this weekend. And we talked and then, you know, we had several other discussions after that. And we sat down for lunch one day and I kind of came to her with her and Tom and, and Chris and everybody with like a plan and outline of what the vision I think could be and what our possibilities would be and what I would accomplish three months in, six months in, et cetera. And you know, and here we are, man, literally just asked for what I wanted and, <laughs> and, and came prepared. Right. And, you know, now I'm literally living the dream, literally living the dream for sure. Perfect. Yeah. All you got to do is ask the worst they can say is no, I love it. Worst they can say, I was at the point where I was like, you know what? The hell with it. Why not, man? <laughs> so I'll bet it all in black. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. I love it. So let's talk more about your plan. So this question is brought yeah. to us by BioWorks IV, if, which uh, they, they do the IV hydration at the NXL events. So if you're uh, looking to get that extra little bit of energy going into NXL Dallas, they do house calls. So uh, hit them up, call the number, text the number that was in the ad. Uh, to pre-order your stuff for NXL Dallas. So what goals do you hope to achieve for the park as the new general manager? Man, I got so much on the docket, man. Um, you know, first things first is I want to get our, um, our facilities obviously were the first thing that I needed to tackle that and staff. Um, you know, we were kind of a little bit of light on staff for a while and, and that, you know, once we get more staff in there, that kind of frees me up to do a little bit more on the infrastructure side. So take care of that. And then once we look at our, our, like our, our, our field, right. So like, you know, needed to get two get need to get to two fields up and running for a while. We just only had one. Um, the other one was just kind of like, you know, netting bad here, netting bad there, no bunkers here, right? Like there's just a lot of stuff that needed to be done to get that feel like cleaning, sweeping, all of that good stuff, which sounds like it's not like you're just sweeping your your kitchen floor, right? Like this is stuff that takes this is stuff that takes time and you need to do it consistently to give players, both tournament players and rec players who play on that as well, um, the best surface possible that you can play on, right? Because it's just, I mean, we've all been there, dude, like you're sliding, the turf's dirty, your hands get all ripped up, like it's just not a good time. So I wanted to fix the facility and make make it a place of, of, of a high standard, right? Especially for like our tournament guys. That's um, one of the biggest things. And like, you know, going to get you know redo the coaching boxes right um where we have plans to we have plans to pave um you know the walk areas right so it's not as muddy um you know working with teams to get kind of their banners out there and just making all these like little cosmetic changes to the field that make it like oh man when you walk in like i'm like man i'm seeing like a i see like a cap city like um, charge, you know, banner. I'm like, if I'm 15, 13, 14, I'm like, and I see that banner and I like see them walking around with the jerseys. I'm like, damn, that is, that's sick. That I got, that just would stoke me out to no end. Right. And so like creating that environment and on the tournament side, like, oh man, this field like cares about me as a player. Right. Like, you know, their, their facilities are up. Like it's little things like that of like making sure the bunkers are blown up for the guys that get there. So they don't have to worry about like, Oh, we got to blow it up ourselves. No, man, you get on the box and you just start playing. Don't worry about none of that. Just worry about becoming the best paintball player you can be. Right. And I want to give those guys the facility 
to do that. And then also like, obviously the better facilities, right? The better, you know, customer experience that um, rec players and families and birthday parties have when they come to us. So that's one of the biggest things. The next thing, man, is just revamping our pro shop. Um, when you walk into, it's like the first thing that you see, right? Like I want to, we had, you know, I was in a process of getting a lot of old product out of there. You know, nothing wrong with that product, right? It's just like, we never really did a job of like promoting to get rid of that product or, you know, making like, I guess the necessary moves to, to move it or sell it. Right. And it just kind of slowly, but surely, I mean, things change so quick in paintball. It's kind of outdated. Right. So I want to revamp the pro shop. I want to get, you know, brands like Project in there, Hormesis, um, you know, all of all of these different things, all of these different brands, any of this state, you know, enjoy, right? These these products that, you know, we see all the guys wearing and that, you know, if I even if I were a person just getting into tournament paintball and I'm seeing all these guys like this is what they have on. So like I know when I like we were talking about it earlier, right? Uh, this is where my style needs to be, right? Like so, you know, they have products for that and getting that in there and and supporting um, paintball brands is really important to me and like also to like our texas stuff as well like i said with project and unos and you know being a shop that carries that stuff i think would speak volume so um that's one um the next thing would be getting uh you know events back right now we got to start small right then this if you're if you're following along like this all all of this stuff kind of goes in together like it builds upon itself so when we get to the point of like our where our facilities are good now we can start hosting events now is that going to be like a usxbl like a you know five man like x ball like probably not right probably not but what can we do is we can call for mises or we could call you know uh, in the pits right like we can we can call people to like hey like you know would you be down to come do something here at outlaw you know what I mean? Like have like a, like a joust, like, um, have a joust event, have like a, a small little three man event. Like, you know, one of the things that, you know, I'd love to do is like talk to like a brand like Hormesis and be like, you know, like, Hey, do you want to make like a special band like for outlaw and have a joust and like the winner of this, this joust over here at outlaw gets it banned. Like, you know, one on one, dude, and like, you know how cool that would be. Like, I don't know. I'm thinking like, just how cool that would be to have like a. Or this is like that, and like you wear it at the field, and like you see the outlaw band, and that would be so sick to have something like that. So, bringing events like that to us, and which obviously brings you know the cash flow in and everything, and 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 gets us kind of like obviously a little bit of a financial gain, and and when you. Ha and when rec players and stuff see that, right, they get more stoked on tournament paintball. So it just all kind of develops on itself. Um, and then, you know, one of the biggest things too um, that I'm super, super excited for, and I know a lot of our a lot of our uh, communities excited for, is we got we got Nightball back, right? So Nightball starts next week. Um, we're gonna be playing under the lights for the first time in a while uh five o'clock so it's gonna be hopper ball um you know 50 bucks gets you unlimited paint plus your entry right so you come up to me i'll fill you up fill you a pod and you first five on the box and then we just turn and burn baby like that's how we get games going and um and i know a lot of people have been uh asking for that for a while and that was a big thing for me because with people you know i mean like there's some odd people with some odd jobs, right? Some odd hours. And like, you're not always able to get out to the field when everybody else is. So if I can get, if I can create an opportunity for uh, a person to come out and play on a Tuesday night, or maybe they like have to work during the day on Saturday and like, cause it's going to be running on Tuesdays and Saturdays and they, they can come out on a Tuesday uh, or, or Saturday, Saturday evening. Dude, I, I mean, they're giving somebody an opportunity to play paintball. Like, that is at its core what I want to do. So those are just some of the things that, you know, are are on the bigger side of like what we want to get done. Um, so, yeah. And I'm sure that a lot of the uh, listeners that are here live, a lot of players that are either on your team or they're in and around the outlaw community, they're definitely excited for these plans. I mean, outlaw was my 
first tournament field playing with the Texas Longhorns uh, back like 2015 to 2019. And yeah, it's exciting to hear all of these uh, kind of updates to the field. Like and being down to one field for a while was a little bit of heartbreak for me. And yeah, yeah like yeah. hearing things like, hey, that both fields are up. Hey, we're getting brand new bunkers. Hey, we're uh, we've got plans to offload like kind of update the pro shop we've got plans to start getting events here again like that that's really exciting and it's overall like really good for the health of the scene as a whole yeah man I, that's you know and that's it's like i said when i when i talked to deb about taking the job you know and that part of my deal was like i love outlaw so much i love the people at outlaw so much the players you know what the community has done for me um is something that I can't even put into words, man. Like I can't even, I can't even put into words what everybody, cause I know like, it's like you got different personalities there, man. You know what I mean? Like I know when I, you know, I saying what's up to Shelly every weekend, right? Like gonna have his camera, like probably gonna have some new, new hormesis swag that nobody's ever seen. You know what I mean? Like, um, you know, like seeing, seeing the new guys, right? So like some of the newer teams, like assault, right? Like, seeing those guys and on their journey and like doing the breakfast club stuff with guys and, 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 and just knowing, you know, obviously I don't know everybody on a personal level. Right. But it feels like, but it feels like I kind of do in a sense, you know what I mean? I, I know them at the paintball field and I know where they're at and kind of their journey. And you see, you see people like Brittany, right. Who's like, you know, taking sick photographs and you remember when she was coming out there and was like, man, I don't know how to work this damn thing. You know what I mean? Like, but seeing like Shelly, like take her under, take her under his wing and like show her a couple things and like seeing the assault guys, like taking the whole grind in the whole off season to go into their first event. Right. Seeing players like Bryson and Connor, like just their development. Right. And, and seeing what they're striving for. Right. So, you know, that's why I'm so passionate about doing all of this stuff for 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 us because I know what it feels like to be a player um and not have it. You know what I mean? You know, just like I said, the little stuff too. Like when I go to the field, like, damn dude, like when we get ready and we don't start playing until like ten forty five, right? Well, what if you came to a blown up field at eight thirty and you could step on the box and start playing at nine with whoever's there? And you don't have to worry about that. Or if you had like a, a an ice chest full of water, like when it's when it gets hot, when it's like 100 degrees, you know what I mean? Like, you know, stuff that the, we know the players need. Like, you know, I know that the players need and I know that the rec players, you know, the people that come in here for birthday parties want to have and the parents and all that stuff. So, you know, yeah. Oh. Well, I'm uh, excited to hear about it. And uh, kind of speaking of the Breakfast Club, let's talk about that a little bit more. So Breakfast Club is something that you've been posting online for a little while about. Tell us more, like, what is the Breakfast Club? Oh, man. So, yeah, that's a good one. The Breakfast Club, honestly, man, it was started uh, started about, I would say, I'd probably say it's officially, probably unofficially started like last, last season. And like towards the end of last year, I was like, man, you know, I really want to go hard and kind of just get up before everybody and get drills and stuff in. Because, you know, if you hear Marcelo talk about it all the time, Tyler Harmon, um, Ryan Greenspan, right? They're always like really pushing the importance of drills. And it's not always just about running points. And obviously we talked about like, you know, when people get there, it takes them a while to get dressed and do to this and that. And so I'm like, I'm not playing paintball until like 1030, dude. I want to, you know, I want to get better as a paintball player, but then I also want to play more paintball. So I'm like, you know, like, let me just start this little thing called the Breakfast Club, right? And that's obviously because it's at the crack ass of dawn, right? Like, if you come out there with me, like, you're out there at, you know, you're out, I mean, shout out to Joel on the salt, dude, that kid was grinding with me during the week, we'd go out there, excuse me, at i mean we you get there you get there at 6 15 obviously still dark you start warming up at 6 30 and then you got about you know once you're done with your warm-up you start with your drills and then you can start seeing the sun peak out and like you're going until you're probably like 7 45 and then we both excuse me jet out for work but um so it's like you know 
you're a breakfast eater, right? That's 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 when breakfast is, right? So it's the breakfast club, um, you know, because you got to come get that work in. So, you know, and I just started posting more about it, right? And I think it just kind of started to take on a life of its own because as I started to post about it, at the same time, I started progressing a little bit more in, in my paintball career. So like maybe, I don't know, like people were seeing like, you know, where I was and like the breakfast club and and wanted to be a part of that because like, they're like, you know, maybe like the drills are like in the, in the work and, and putting all the hard work in is like something that could help me, right? Like help me in my game, right? So slowly but surely, like I started having people like hit me up about it, like you know, and I because I you know I had Breakfast Club, you know, tag the bre- or not tag the Breakfast Club, but write Breakfast Club, post about it on my story or whatever, and you know it started by me by myself. You know, I had a couple people hit me up about it. You know, and they would they would hit me up and then it'd be like, "Where are you at?" And I'm like, "Oh, dude, I couldn't get up." <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, slowly but surely, though, like you know, one person, two people, three people. And then I remember one time, you know, getting all my stuff ready to go for drills. And I'm like, looking up and I'm like, damn, dude, there's like, like eight or nine people out here. Like, shit. (laughs) Um, You know, this might be, might be doing something. And, um, you know, I think people just kind of like, really gravitated towards that because it is like, it gives you a sense of like, all right, yeah, you know, like, I'm really taking my game serious and I want to get better as a paintball player. And that's ultimately what I want it to be and what it is, right? It's like, you know, everybody's coming together for one common goal to make each other better, right? To iron sharpens iron. So, like, you know, I've had, you know, I've had uh, Sherman come out there and, like, you know, give some tips out to some people from Notorious. And, um, you know, I've been out there, obviously, like, we have guys from, from all the way from pro to, you know, D5 out there just trying to get working. And, and it's the door is open, man, anytime, right? You can just pull up, show up and, 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 uh, and get, get some work in. And, um, and that's, that kind of goes along with what I wanted the culture of outlaw to be is that like, you know, there's no one person that's bigger than the field, right? There's, there's no like egos or anything like that. It's just, a bunch of people that just want to become the best paintball players that they possibly can. And um, it's been super cool to see how it's grown. Um, I didn't never really expected it to, to be what it is, but I think we have just like, we'll grow so much more. Right. And uh, you know, uh, working on getting some hats and stuff made soon. So like, hopefully you see some breakfast club merch walking around here at some of the events here soon. So yeah, man. Well, I'd love to see the breakfast club merch. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, yes, sir. All right. So this question is brought to us by FU Athletics. So throughout your entire paintball career, what is your single favorite moment so far? Oh, man. Favorite moment? That's, there's been so many. Uh, <laughs> um, well, I have probably two that are like probably up there. Um, obviously, the first one would be Europe. Mm-hmm. Playing you know, playing in Europe was just a trip. You know, we we didn't do so hot, <laughs> but um, just being saying that like paintball took me to 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 France, right? Like that's crazy in its own right. Like I played paintball in France. Like when people hear that, hear that, they're like, "What paintball in France?" So that was really cool. My girlfriend was with me, so we went to go see the Eiffel Tower and all that good stuff. And um, so that was one. And then two would probably be. When I played with um, one of my favorite teams, uh, Swag Jackers, mm. uh, shout out to to Jake and and Nick and all those guys, Carolina style inside joke, but um, and that was the Chicago. Like at that point, like at that point in the season, it was it was a lot, dude. It was just you know with everything with like the team that I played on prior, everything and kind of how that fell apart and and i was just the long season kind of got a little discouraged and um 
Chicago, dude. I mean, I've never laughed so hard on a, at a paintball tournament in my entire life. If you haven't, if you haven't played on the Swag Jackers, if they're ever having tryouts, go go hit them up, dude. You'll you'll have the best time of your entire life. And it just reminded me of like why I play paintball is because of the people and um, you know how much fun it could be. So, yeah, hundred percent. I mean, that's why we all do it, right? So this next question is brought to us by 71 design. So you're also the new coach for cap city charge, which is a team that was kind of born out of the ashes of Austin hypnotic. And at least from my perspective, from the outside looking in, it looks like they're kind of uh, trimming down to just one line so that they can focus more uh, as a team and on each of the individual members. So how did you come to join charge? Yeah, man. So that was, um, that was a unique one because obviously I had played, you know, in Joe's organization before played with him um, and a lot of those guys on the team. So I knew them already. I kind of like knew their, their play style and, you know, knew, known a lot of those guys for some years. And I had, you know, pretty sure I had expressed interest in coaching and, and, and uh, was, looking around to see kind of where I might be able to do that, you know, like, um, and Joe, when they started cap city, you know, like I didn't really know that they, you know, I didn't know where they were going to go in direction in terms of a coach. Like, you know, I hadn't, I don't, I hadn't talked to him about, about coaching them, but, um, he kind of just like, he hit me up and was like, Hey man, like, would you be, you know, interested in doing something like this? And do you think it would like work with your schedule or whatever? And um, I thought that would be like, I was like, yeah, hundred um, percent. You know, I would love to do that because that's a way for me to like, one, um, you know, for me to kind of like hone my coaching skills, right? Because I, I want to just, that that is an area that I want to get better in. And, and ultimately, like I said, you know, when I'm done playing and I can, you know, no longer, you know, play at front attacker and crawl around a paintball field everywhere when my back fr- finally gives out, um, that is what I want to do, you know, because uh, Ryan, Ryan Gray is somebody that I look up to and I, and, and, uh, you know, I haven't had the opportunity to meet Mike Bianca, but I really love his f- uh, philosophy and stuff on the game and kind of how he thinks about that. And I just love how those guys attack paintball. Um, but Ryan, especially, you know, I've talked to him in the past about coaching and, expressed interest and all of that stuff. And, um, that's what I want to do. So this is a perfect opportunity for me to, to get my feet wet. I've have coached events for different teams in the past, but never like for a full season. Um, so, you know, I felt like this was a good opportunity and for everybody out there listening, um, this, you, you're all, you're asking yourself like, okay, like what can I do to help with my paintball? Right. Like, so, you know, uh, there was uh, a little bit of a, a financial help that they were, were giving me for, for coaching them for the season. Right. Like I'm not, you know, making big pucks by any means, but this is something that is helping me play paintball. Right. Like me coaching these guys is something is money that I'm going to take to help me play. Right. And divert that income. Right. So it's like you're looking for all of these different ways to like help you continue to play um, on top of wanting to coach. Right. Like but again, that's I'm, I'm telling that to all the younger guys and, and everybody out there is like, oh, well, I can't do this or I can't do that. I was like, well, yes, you can. You just have to be creative and, and, and hustle a little bit for it. Right. So um, that's kind of how I got linked up. And, yeah, I'm super excited for the season, man. Super excited to be coaching these guys. Yeah, we're looking forward to seeing what you can do with them. Uh, I know that, uh, I mean, you guys came down and scrimmage us this past weekend. It was good to kind of have uh, your mind to bounce ideas back and forth with in the tower, uh, bounce uh, some of our frustrations a little bit too back and forth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. But, uh, oh yeah, no, it was a good time. No, I, I, that was a great, that was a great practice. Yeah. That was, uh, that was awesome to see all the teams there. And it ran really smoothly too, which was nice. Yeah, Which definitely. Nice, I really, yeah. How we um for anybody who wasn't there, how we ended up doing it was uh I kind of took a page out of the uh, X Factors book and how they do their matches, which is just uh start with six minutes on the clock, 
Uh, that way you kind of get into those time sensitive scenarios a little bit faster where you, either you're up one, down one with however, or up two, down two. Um, we also did a four pod limit so that we uh, maybe can get a little bit faster in that mid game and closing. And also you just increase the amount of breakouts and the amount of reps that you get over the course of a day. And I think at least for us, we ended up doing four six minute matches and we only bought like 10, like we only went through 10 cases and even then we had pods left over after that. So like getting what four matches of that's what, like 15 to 20 breakouts roughly. Uh, mm -hmm. And just doing the four pod limit. That's something I would strongly encourage anybody else who's running like a three or a four team scrimmage. Uh, or even if you're just running a one team scrimmage to a bunch of those uh, smaller time matches that way you're not just spending all day shooting the net and bringing eight pods out every point because it, that, yeah. I mean, you kind of beat a dead horse out after a certain point. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was productive. I think it was like it was a good level of productivity um, because, like, yeah, you said it yourself, Lee. You don't want to just a lot of times, and and I hear it a lot. Like, you just go out there and you just you just run around like chickens with your head cut off with no intent or anything like that. And you like, you know, no, this is like placing an emphasis. You still get a lot of points in a short amount of time. Guys get good reps. You know. Um, I see, saw what I needed to see from my guys and yeah, it was good. It was good. Definitely steal that idea. Yeah. And a uh, shout out to the gunners and to jackpot and the dragoons as well that were a part of that. Uh, so yeah, this next question is brought to us by Hydra. So USXBL is this upcoming weekend, just here in a few days now. And, uh, so what goals do you have for your squad and who should we be watching out for on the field and on the webcast? Yeah, hundred percent, man. So goals for us, man, um, you know, being that it is a blind layout, right. It's going to be hard to obviously like dissect and do whatever you need to do. Like as we would maybe for like an NXL event, right? Like you have a layout week in a practice, you have plays that you're going to like, you know, you've got one, two, and three. This is what I do here. This is what I do there. You can't really talk about that at all before this sort of event. So you know, we're going to have to figure that out, you know, the day of, which is fine, you know, like we're all paintball players, right? So that shouldn't be an issue. What I want from my guys is I want them to come in, you know, with a clear mind. I want their goal to have their goal to be to control what they can control, right? Like that's what I want the theme of the day to be control what you can control. And if you prepare or if you like can do that um, and prepare yourself mentally to go out and perform. Right. And when I say that, like when I say preparation, I don't mean in the form of a like, oh, I got to study a layout. No, like I want your I want your sleep to be good. I want your diet to be good. I want your nutrition throughout the week to be good. Like not just the day before, because like that doesn't do anything for you. Like you need a consistent week of like good nutrition, good hydration, good sleep, right? I want you to visualize being successful on the field, right? I want you to visualize this stuff, like envision, you know, uh, what you're going to do and, and, and how you're going to perform and the result that you want from yourself. And then once you get to the event, you're like, yeah, I've done everything that I can in my power to prepare to be successful here and go out and just perform right like i think the rest will take care of itself and then if they are able to do that um i can live with the results right you know i'm my job is going to be to put them in the position to be successful um and i want them just to focus 100 percent on you know point by point right just point by point all you got to do is you know because some of these guys like and I think a lot of people are like this, right? They they start thinking about outside things and they're like worried about like, oh, the pain or like, oh, we have a long break or mm. like, oh, like they start over dissecting a layout. Like, I don't want that all to come in on their, come in on their head and like, and, and then that they're just, you're just bonkers by the time they get to the event. Like, no, I got, I got a guy who's, who's going to be with me. Who's not playing this event for the team. Um, We're going to be handling the paint. 
we're going to be handling what we do during the break period. Like, you know, we got, there's a lot of teams that have a long break. Like, dude, we've got an Airbnb. I will worry about scouting the teams that we play. Please go back to the Airbnb and do not sit out in the sun. Right. <laughs> um, so it's like, you know, let me worry about that stuff. And then you just worry about playing paintball. So that's my goal for them. Just like, you know, prepare how you can or the best you can and, and control the controllables. And um, in terms of players that you need to watch, dude, um, 100 percent, hands down, um, Connor. Connor Sanders is he is. And he's all going to go to his head. He's going to see this. Right. So, but <laughs> no, Connor is, uh, Connor is like, you're starting to see Connor take off and you're starting to see the, the light bulb click. Um, you're starting to see the wheels turn in his head and be like, Oh no, I am the guy. And I'm going to show you that I'm the guy. Um, because there were multiple, I mean, like multiple times in practice where I'm like, you know, there's like, you know, I'm waiting for, I'm waiting for another guy to make a push. You know where my middle guy might have the ball right but no here's connor like hopping the snake beam and going to like close a point out himself just because he wants it right like maybe he doesn't <laughs> need to be doing that right but like you know he is showing a sort of a, a sense of aggression and uh and purpose in his play that i think you know when i when i first started you know playing with Connor and like seeing him play and how he's matured and grown and stuff like that. It's like, you didn't really see that, but you're starting to see him like kind of ascend. And I think, you know, I think this season is going to be really big for him. And um, I just hope that, you know, I don't, you know, I don't lose him after this year. Right. <laughs> but <laughs> that's, that's, that's paintball and how it goes, but definitely need to watch out for him. Um, 100%. All right, for sure. We're going to be watching out for that. Uh, watch out for Connor. Yeah, Enzo's in the chat. He's saying, come on, man, you're giving away all our secrets. <laughs> oh, man. That's right. funny. So this next question is brought to us by Get That Shot. Message Get That underscore shot on Facebook or Instagram if you're needing media coverage at the upcoming USXBL event this weekend. Uh, he's still got a couple of openings, so reach out to him quickly. So, uh Benji, this is a question I ask everybody that comes on the show. Kind of helps me uh, get a temperature check on the on the uh, local scene, get the word out on anybody who's flying under the radar, or someone who's up and coming. So, is there anybody in Texas, either teams, players, brands, or projects that have caught your attention lately? Who do you think deserves more recognition for what they're doing? Oh man, uh, let me see. I mean, you know, I think. I think what Dan has been able to do, I know it's, the, you know, that brand, maybe like I consider Shelly a brand. Shelly is a brand, man. <laughs> what, what he's doing right now for us, I think is just, you know, and then, you know, also like Brittany as well. Like I think what they're doing for us in our scene is just um, crazy right now. I think it's just helping us out so much and giving us like such a, a voice um to the outside world right shelly's reach is so wide now um that you know when when he takes a sick photo of somebody at the field like you know that goes to just thousands of people that aren't you know in texas right they're just worldwide so i think you know shelly's a big one obviously he he's he's known right but i think you know it's just i just kind of wanted to shout him out and then also too um again you know when i'm talking about when i'm talking about players i think for us at our field there's so many guys that are like up and coming that i think you need to like just really like pay attention to you know from the pro level all the way um down to you know the lower divisions right so like if i'm thinking of a pro like i'm thinking about a guy like um Ty bateman um, you know, who is just a, an absolute savage on the field. And I think he's been doing his thing for a long, long time. So um, he's a big one. Um, I think, you know, you've got, you've got a kid like Connor who is, um, you know, just hasn't, no, hasn't popped off on the national scene yet, right? Nobody knows about him, right? Like he's just going to continue to get better and better and better and better. And I think, you know, the more exposure that he's able to get and the more, the more positions that he's able to 
put himself in to be successful, right? If he chooses to go, because I mean, it's going to come, right? Like it's going to, there's going to be a point in time where it's like, all right, like, you know, I want to go, I want to do something in paintball or, you know, I just kind of want to go to the other direction. So, you know, I selfishly hope he chooses to go that way, but he's a big guy. He's a big guy that I, I think is going to um, do a lot of good things. And then uh, in terms of uh, brands, uh, man, I, I love what you guys are doing over at Project. I think that's super cool. I, I mean, it's just around, just down the road. Like, I think that just like, you know, I've yet to get my hands on some stuff. I need to, <laughs> but I think what you guys are doing is super cool. And that being like, you know, something that's local to, to you all is like really rad to see. And, and then, and I think also too, man, um, when you're talking about like, when I, when I say teams and re- when I'm talking about teams and recognition, like outlaw, you know what I mean? Outlaw, man, like, it's coming, you know, mm-hmm. and the recognition is we're on the way. We got new teams. We've got new teams being formed. We got a lot of teams out there in um, at USXBL and a team, obviously, and a team that I'm really excited to watch. Um, I mean, if I had to pick one, like um, I'm really excited for Austin Oni. I think Austin Oni is one of those programs that they got something special, man. They got a lot of really like they got love for each other. They've got a culture, you know, the good people, dude. So, you know, I'm really excited to see them. And I think, you know, as they continue to grow and get more recognition, it's just going to be special as well. I agree. It's definitely some, uh, some exciting things, exciting individuals, uh, over at outlaw. All right. So let me check, yeah. uh, check chat one more time yeah enzo says send this man a care package absolutely like if there's something you're looking to get your hands on over from project just shoot me a message and i'll i'll definitely make sure you get the, your name on the list all right uh let's see uh checking any last things in the chat no i think that just about does it all right so this final question is brought to us by compete so message him that's gel stewart on facebook or instagram mentioned in the pits for 10 percent off of your order of soft goods so benji thank you so much for your time do you have any last shout outs or things you'd like to say before we sign off no man i i think um what you're doing is great um you know thank you so much for having me on um this is really really special something i'll definitely never forget um so shout out to you and what you're doing here i think that's super awesome man um also shout out to uh tom deborah chris uh todd carolyn all of y'all over at outlaw um and then shout out to um just every team man shout out to all the teams at outlaw everybody shelly enzo um anthony uh lopez dude everybody at outlaw all the teams dude shout out to all you guys because without without you guys it's like you guys are the reason or that I do what I do, um, to see you guys be successful, um, just, uh, brings me so much joy. So like shout out to, to all my teams at outlaw and, uh, I'm excited to, to see everybody at, at, uh, USXBL coming up. For sure. And there's a lot of outlaw teams that are competing in USXBL. You got Austin assault. You've obviously got the entire Austin notorious program, uh, Austin Oni. Let's see who else is on this list. Um, Hold on to D4, uh, again, Austin Evolution, Austin Hype, um, Cap City Charge, obviously your team. Um, let's see who else is on here. There's just a lot of a lot of Austin representation here. Uh, Love it. Yeah, Austin Notorious again in the Elite Division. So you got teams from top to bottom. Um, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to y'all's performance. So I think that just about does it. Uh, Thank you, Benji, again for your time. And thank you, everybody online, so much for tuning in. Be sure to go follow Benji at Benji Shro on Instagram, all one word. Also, uh, follow Outlaw Paintball Park on Instagram. Uh, what other guests would you like to see on the show? Be sure to lo- leave a comment down below. While you're at it, hit that subscribe button. The show goes live weekly here on youtube.com slash at in the pits paintball podcast and recordings are posted to YouTube, Amazon, Apple podcasts, and Spotify the next day. I'm going to give a quick shout out to my partner and sponsor to your subscribers on Patreon. 
FU Athletics, Get That Shot, Paintball Kumite, Compete, Bem Raps, Skull Monkeys Paintball, Hydra, XDPL Events, Mariachi Agalas de Oro, Podrunners Union, 71 Designs, and Bioworks IV. We will see you guys next week for episode 92. We'll do like a post USXBL breakdown, and then pretty soon after that, it's going to be uh, NXL Dallas season. So, uh, yeah, the we knew the season was going to be front loaded, but man, it's coming fast. So we will see you yeah. next week. Uh, be on the lookout. I will be on the uh, webcast for a few of the games during USXBL this weekend. So uh, I'll see everybody there. If you see me in person, come say hi. I'm going to have a bunch of stickers to give away. So yeah, uh, see you there. Benji, thank you again so much. Yes, sir. All right. See you there. <laughs>